7 o'clock, I'd like to call a meeting to order for Monday, May 17, 2021. Please rise for the pledge. Alderman Riley Cole will lead us in prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer, please. Our Father in heaven, we pause to thank you for this opportunity once more given unto us to meet here in person. Father, we ask that you be with those that have come tonight, cover them with your blood and grace and mercy. Father, we ask you that, that you give us the board, the understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge to lead our community. Father, we pray for our those that serve and protect us, not only our officers and our firemen, but our doctors, our nurses, our health care givers. Yeah. Father, we just ask you to, to smile upon Diasburg. Mm -hmm. Show us the way to go, the way to be good citizens and good leaders of this community. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Recorder, show all present here tonight. We do have a quorum and can conduct business. We don't have to call the roll anymore. We meet in person. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of minutes. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes from April 19th, 2021. Move. Motion from James Baltimore is our second. Second. Second from Willie Cole. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? Okay, next item on the agenda, new business. Uh, under new business, item A, uh, the 2020 Fire Department Annual Report, Chief Brett Sipes, and I think he's got a, uh, an award or uh, an announcement to make after that. Chief. I think everybody's got a copy. Yeah. Of Everybody had a copy in their packet. I, I, I'll hit some highlights, but I'm glad to be meeting back in person. Uh, but uh, uh, everybody knows 2020 was a very challenging year, and it was uh, we was very fortunate to get through it with minimal disruption of service. And uh, I give you some highlights of our 2020 year. Uh, we had 17 firefighters in 2020 that had uh, COVID. So, and uh, so far this year, we've had four since 2021 come around. Uh, we, we dropped our ISO, or improved it from a class three to class two. Our fire response totals were 678 fire calls. We, it was an increase of 17 from 2019. And our EMS calls were 2,533, which decreased 140. And most of that was due to COVID. People didn't want us in their houses or didn't want to go to the hospital. Uh, so we still logged over 5,950 hours of training. Uh, we, still, we conducted 1,800 inspections. That includes over 600 reinspections of properties. And uh, we also do, uh, did 60 commercial plans review. So that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, 34 industrial inspections, 53 commercial apartment complexes inspected. We still conducted 35 fire drills, issued 145 burn permits, and uh, we installed 493 smoke alarms. I think that was the best year so far. Uh, we delivered 40 doses of Narcan since April of 2019. So far this year, we've done eight doses in Narcan. And uh, we've had 22 personnel, 42% uh, of our department's been vaccinated. I think it's a little above the state average. Uh, and uh, as of 5-13-2021, we have a certified through FAA a remote pilot to certified to fly the drone. That's just a little highlights if y'all got any questions. Any any questions of Chief Sipes? Who is the person that can fly the drone? Uh, Randall Beaver. He, 
He passed his test uh, the 13th. And so, so Keith, I, I noticed in the paper that you uh, ran an ad looking for some personnel. Can you uh, elaborate on that? We have uh, we have 46 budgeted positions in operations. We got six staff members, and uh, we had one leave here recently. We we come up to full staff, but. Uh, we had one leave, and uh, we had run the ad, and uh, I think we're hiring Hell Start Wednesday to get us back up to full staff again. And uh, I think we got a couple more applicants ready to go, and we got to run through the agility test. And if we have any more openings, hopefully we can fill them pretty quick. Don't you normally have a reserve list? You don't have one. Uh, either? it's hard. To, reserve is hard to get people to work a part-time job now. Uh, people want a full-time job. And uh, it's just been difficult. We got 12, 12 reserve slots. And we got one field right now, and he's a lieutenant on Union City. So he has no intention of coming to Dyersburg. But he, he fills in when we need him. But it's just, uh, I guess it's just the times. It's his staff. Did you say you've been trying to fill a staff? A uh, firefighting positions. Uh, oh, what? Okay. What do you look for? Uh, EMT and mm -hmm. uh, to pass our physical agility tests. And that puts you into the uh, actual fire department? Uh, okay. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. You got to fig. you said you're looking for a EMT. We require, we require a state of Tennessee EMT license. Okay. How do I, how do I go about getting that? Uh, through Darsburg State. Uh, they have an EMT program. Uh, all the community colleges around have one. It usually takes maybe a year. They used to do one that took one semester. Uh, I think they've kind of, they, I think it was too much, so they went back to two semesters. Then when they get out of that, they have to pass the state test. How many female applicants have we have we had in the city for for that? For we the have it. Uh, we had one about uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago, and her husband moved out of town before we could hire her. And uh, she was interested. She was qualified, and her her husband's job he got transferred. So we're. We're trying. We're putting it out there. We we advertised in Weekly County, uh, Lauderdale County, uh, O'Bine County, Dyer County, and. Explain one thing. Ricky said reserve. Explain that to me. How did that work? Uh, they get uh, a reserve personnel works like two shifts a month, and uh, they just kind of we we assign them to a, sh uh, a shift A, B, or C. And they'll, they're mandated to work two shifts that month. Well, let me commend you and your staff. You were on my street the other day <laughs> at a house, a grease fire. Okay. And you did, I walked rolled in there and it was, everything was under control. So I said, wow. Everybody calm and collected, doing a, a great job. I can understand why in a city our size that people don't want to come and be a part of you. It used to be, a, I've always heard it before, they'd always say we have a stack of applicants and I hadn't found it yet. What do you contribute that to, Chief? Just the times, I guess. Let me, let me, have, let me clarify just a little bit. So we're looking for folks in almost every department in the city of Dyersburg. We've never had to advertise uh, in the papers for uh, employment. We've never had to advertise on Facebook uh, for employment. So we're looking for staff, police department, fire department, street department, water, sewer, gas, recreation, you name it, we're looking for folks. So I think it's, you won't say the times, whatever you want to say, uh, there, there are folks that, that stay home and maybe earn more money than they can at work. You've heard it, it's all over the United States and we're not, uh, um, we're not, 
we're involved in that as well. We're having a tough time hiring people, sanitation, solid waste, um, all of that. Chief, on the on the, uh, on, the, on the reserve program, um, is it a possibility that you could put them on the reserve program and allow them to, like they used to do, uh, allow them to work while they go to school to become EMT certified. And why I'm saying that is that it's very difficult for somebody to go to school and try to be EMT qualified when they don't know where they can get the job. Right. Uh, and, and I wish you would look at that. I wish you would look at that. What the, 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 the thing about it is uh, like their uh, protective clothing, PPE, cost us $1,800. Uh, then we had to buy uniforms and we got to train and the the experience we've had they didn't pass EMT school then we had to let them go and it's just a but, uh, but chief now we can I, I, it's just a lot of expenses yeah. uh, but but chief yeah we don't have any women firefighters we are one of the few places you know major cities like we are that don't have any women firefighters. We we should. I wish. Now I'm I'm just saying that. I, we you know we set policies. We can't tell you what to do. Right. We set policies. But I wish. I think some of us may wish that you would consider uh, kind of going. You know, kind of women or minorities. Cause you got how many firefighters? Uh, we got 46 budgeted positions in operations, six staffs. So. And you have. No women and no minorities. And, you know, so would you please? Uh, we, we've been trying. We've been talking about ourselves trying to get back into schools, which right now. But you could go through that, again, so. this certification of the reserve program. If you look at it again, like it used to be, if you look at it again and put it back in place where they could work, you know, people could work. And then you could, uh, at some point, if they pass the test, they could go into the, and you could put them on a different level where they wouldn't have to be, you know, you have to buy all those uniforms until you, after they became an employee. Isn't it possible? If they didn't graduate, though, how much are you out? It, uh, well, we're out $1,800 for the turnouts if we can't fit them to somebody else, and which actually they come with their name on them now, so. But they uh, did it for years. I mean, you know, it, it, I mean, it just, all of a sudden it changed. No, oh, it's it's been an EMT for several years. They yeah, they yeah that's one, right. One time about ten years too. Yeah, and uh, they got. But if you would, would you please? I want the media to hear me say this. Yeah. Would you please consider some women and minority firefighters? I've been trying. Okay. I've been trying. I've advertised everywhere. I just I don't know. Okay. If we can help. Yes. Who volunteers? <laughs> is it age limit though? Yeah. Is it age limit? <laughs> no, we don't have an age limit. Congratulations. Yeah. On and thank you. ISO rating. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's, that Let me go. A lot for the uh, department right and there. I want to go back and I want to thank you. I'll say this publicly. Y'all saved my wife's life. Y'all saved her life. During the COVID? Yes, sir. My wife, that Sunday morning, she would have died if it hadn't have been for y'all. Y'all got there first. And then the other group got there. Y'all saved her life. I appreciate you. Got a good, good department. Just if you don't mind, please try to. If you got any suggestions, I'm open for them. We, we're you trying. Know, now, don't you suggest to me advertising in Lauderdale County and all that? I'm trying to and talk I, to you about I, it. I tried. And, uh, Send him some folks down there, Mr. Baltimore. Sir. Send him some folks down there. Well, I, I will. I mean, and, and I'm telling you how we did it years ago. We sent letters out to the different churches. And the pastors and members of, and the citizens of this town here sent people down there to help put that in place. All right, thank you. Any, any two semesters, you say it takes two semesters? I think it takes two, two semesters right now. Well, that's a real long time. Yeah, I wouldn't want to pay for it if I wouldn't know get the job. Though. And, you know, uh, community college, I think, is free for most people if they qualify now. So, so you've got... Excuse me, you've got to be EMT certified. Yes, sir. To be a firefighter. Well, you look, we run, t uh, 
2,600 EMS calls a year. We delivered 40 doses in Narcan and stuff. I mean, uh, they're doing a lot in the EMS field now. So not not having the EMT is kind of hindrance because we can't put them on the truck to run those EMS calls because it's against state. And, and that's actually a requirement on the job description. Yes. That was changed many years ago, many, many years ago. Back in, yeah, Billy Taylor was here. Yeah, when Billy Taylor was chief. Is the, right. uh, what about the pay scale difference between an EMT and a firefighter with it's, an EMT certification? Uh, it's just required, so we don't have a we don't have a different pay scale. All of ours is just required to be EMT. Well, I, I guess the question I'm asking: if somebody wanted to be a firefighter, they'd have to pass. They'd have to be certified as EMT. But if they can make more being an EMT. You that's, see what that's, I'm saying here. Is, yes, that, is, that, a, is that an issue? It, it is. Uh, West Tennessee Healthcare just raised their pay scale here, trying to keep guys because we hired a paramedic away from them, and they offered them a big raise to stay, and they, they did it across the board, trying to keep them from leaving. So, I mean that. But he came anyway because he wanted to be a firefighter. Any other questions, Chief? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. You've got, got one other thing. I right? got one more thing. Uh, uh, I'd like to recognize Doug Despain. What up, Doug? What did he say? Doug Despain. Doug Despain. Uh, in 2021, Doug was awarded the Firefighter of the Year for our Dyersburg Fire Department. Oh, wow. And. Uh, he was nominated and voted on by members of the Dyersburg Fire Department. So in late September, I had the chance to nominate Doug for the Tennessee Firemen's Association Firefighter of the Year Award. And on April 22nd, 2021, Doug was presented the Tennessee Firemen's Association Firefighter of the Year Award for 2020 at the West Tennessee Fire Chiefs meeting that we held in Madison County Fire Department. And, uh, the Firefighter of the Year Award is for any level firefighter, regardless of rank, and includes both career and volunteer firefighters from across Tennessee. I'm proud of Doug and, and the fire department for having one of our own selected to receive this prestigious award. Uh, Doug became work, when did you start working? 2016? 2016, So in his short time at the fire department, he's got an enthusiasm for the job. You see it every day. He's always willing to help with anything, any task. He's always wanting to train. So I've just wanted him to be recognized, and the mayor did in front of the board. Beautiful. And we should appreciate him. Doug, you want to say anything? You're welcome to say something if you want to. Oh. <laughs> Hey, put you on the spot. Hey, no lie, there's tons of guys over at that fire department that could be standing right here right now. There's, it's all, I can't name one that couldn't be here. It's a bunch of good guys, man. I promise y'all that. And they're here for the citizens. They'll go to the end of the world for them. And appreciate y'all having me here tonight. And appreciate Brett. Thank you. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, uh, Dyersburg Police Department Officer Recognition, Chief Steve Isbell. Chief? Oh, old department, it's wonderful. So we've waited till we're back in person to do this, and some of these awards are from last year, but That's correct. we made a promise to these folks we would do this, and we're glad to do it, so and go thank ahead. you for allowing us uh, to do this, for sure. So this is the awards presentations uh, through 2019, and we'll catch up with uh, uh, the following year uh, here pretty soon. Uh, the first officers is Officer Alex McCommon and Officer Dustin Holly. And Officer Alex McCommon is not here tonight. He is out of town for training, but we'll try to get him in and recognize him uh, publicly when he returns. Officer, Officer Holly and Officers McCommon responded to a call of an overdose upon arrival Officer McCommon discovered that the victim was lying in the floor gasping for air and not responsive to officers. Officer McCommon was informed the victim had an opioid addiction and administered Narcan. Officer Holly then arrived and also administered Narcan due to the victim not showing signs of consciousness. 
Officers continued to check vitals on the victim and attempted to wake him up until EMS personnel arrived. Shortly after their arrival, the victim regained consciousness. When officers arrived, the victim showed signs of lack of oxygen uh, and uh, the victim was pale and his lips were turning blue. The victim admitted to taking heroin before his collapse. The actions exhibited by officers McCommon and Holly prolonged and saved the life of someone overdosing on heroin. There's no doubt that officers McCommon and Holly's actions did save the life of this victim and therefore these officers are awarded the police life-saving ribbon. Next officers are Sergeant Logan Abbott, Field Training Officer Thomas Pollock, and Field Training Officer Mason Hammond. On the early morning of January the 11th of 2020, officers were dispatched to the Kist Avenue Tunnel in reference to the vehicle submerged in floodwaters. The caller was not the owner and was unsure if there was anyone trapped inside the vehicle. Dyersburg had been experiencing heavy storms throughout the night causing flooding and damage. These officers entered to the code floodwaters for possible water rescue. Officers uh, still remaining outside causing, uh, excuse me, it was still raining outside causing the tunnel and vehicle to continue to fill with water. Officers entered to the water and waded through hip and chest deep code flood water to reach the submerged vehicle. Once reaching the vehicle, officers had to break the windows of the vehicle to move items around and performed a hand sweep of the vehicle to ensure that no one was trapped inside or drowning. It was discovered that the vehicle had been abandoned. Officers arrived on the scene. They did not hesitate to enter the water regardless of the risk they faced. These officers had not been trained on water rescues, yet acted without hesitation. Therefore, these officers are being awarded the police merit ribbon for their actions. And I will give the officers their ribbons. Holly? <laughs> That's nice. Great, great. Field training officer Pollock. And field training officer Mason Hammond. Lastly, I want to recognize uh, all of the Dyersburg Police Department. Uh, as you heard Chief Sipes say, this is a, a difficult year for everyone, um, not just uh, emergency services, um, but for, for everyone. We've got an outstanding team. We have 68 uh, uh, full-time employees. Six of those are certified officers. Eight are civilian staff, or what we refer to as support staff, because without our support staff, um, we'd be very limited in, in how we can perform. So I, I do recognize all of our officers for the hard work that they do. For a few minutes, I'd like to move into a, another thing. Last week was National Law Enforcement Memorial Week. Um, and, uh, you know, this is always um, something that hits home uh, to us, that, that we honor and recognize the, the many officers that have been killed in the line of duty. And in 2020, there were 362 law enforcement officers killed. Um, of those, 45 were from gunfire, but the leading cause was from COVID-19 with 234 that died in the line of duty. Compared to 2019, there was 150 officers uh, that died and 49 were from gunfire. Here in Dyersburg, recognizing uh, and honoring Investigator Frank Thomas Maynard in the watch Friday, July 25th of 1975. Investigator Maynard was shot and killed while chasing a suspect he had witnessed firebombing the federal building in downtown Dyersburg at 1 in the morning. The suspect thought he was being watched by the FBI and mistakenly bombed the Social Security Administration's office, thinking it was the FBI's office. Investigator Maynard was in plain clothes in an unmarked patrol car when he witnessed the act and gave chase to the suspect. As Investigator Maynard came around the corner in front of the bus station, the suspect had already exited his car and was waiting with a high-powered rifle. The suspect opened fire, shooting through the patrol car door and striking Investigator Maynard in the left side. He was able to radio that he had been shot, 
but had died before other officers arrived. The suspect was taken into custody without further incident. The man later died of cancer while in prison. Investigator Maynard has served with the agency for six years. He was survived by his son and two daughters. The next one is from Lauderdale County, but it's really uh, personal to us, and, and I'll explain uh, here momentarily. Lauderdale County Sheriff's Office, uh, Deputy Sheriff Kevin Maurice Ward, in the watch Tuesday, January 7th, 2nd of 1990. Deputy Kevin Ward and Deputy Bobby Nolan were shot and killed when they gave a ride to an 82-year-old man whose car had broken down. Unknown to the deputies, the man had a revolver hidden in his jacket. As they entered the city limits of Ripley, the man shot both deputies in the back of the head. Their patrol car crossed the median, climbed up an embankment, and crashed into a field. A policeman found both deputies sitting upright with their seat belts on. Both were dead. The suspect was in the back seat, unconscious from the impact. The suspect had a criminal history that dated back to 1927. He had been convicted of assaults, weapon violations, and various other crimes. He was committed to a mental institution where he died in September of 1992. Deputy Ward had served with the Lauderdale County Sheriff's Department for three years. He was survived by his wife and four children. One of Deputy Ward's children is LaQuinta Ward, who is a Dyersburg police officer. Deputy Ward's brother, Detective Rod Ward, is a Dyersburg police detective. I'll end with um, a poem called The Final Inspection. The policeman stood and faced his God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, policeman. How shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek? To my church have you been true? The policeman squared his shoulders and said, No, Lord, I guess I ain't, because those of us who carry badges can't always be a saint. I've had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was rough, and sometimes I've been violent because the streets were awfully tough. But I never took a penny that wasn't mine to keep, though I've worked a lot of overtime when the bills just got too steep. And I never passed a cry for help. Tough at times, I shook with fear, and sometimes, God forgive me, I've wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They never wanted me around except to calm their fear. If you've a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. I never expected or had too much, but if you don't, I'll understand. There was silence all around the throne where the saints had often trod as the policeman waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, policeman. You've borne your burdens well. Come walk a beat on heaven's streets. You've done your time in hell. In Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Thank you for allowing me to share this time with you. Um, God bless our, our law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Dustin, Logan, Thomas, Mason, thank you for all that you do, and the support staff here as well, and other officers, thank you for what you do. Captain Donovan's here. Raise your hand, Captain Donovan. A ship captain, glad to have you with us as well from Dyser Fire Department and the rest of you as well, so thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda, um, attorney invoice that was attached. <clears throat> the attorney invoice uh, for the amount of $2,429. And 75 cents. I entertain a motion to approve the attorney invoice. So move. Motion for Mayor Claire Hopper. Is there a second? Second. Second for Ricky Hammond. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. That sign on the agenda will be the bids. The bids were attached. Um, these were the bids awarded. Um, again, these were all uh, budgeted items. That don't need to that do not need to be voted on uh, tonight. Any questions about these two bids? Okay, hearing none. Next item on the agenda: report from Alderman, Mr. Baltimore. We'll start with you. Yeah, uh, when, when are we going to have a, a street committee meeting so we can talk about streets again? Just whenever somebody wants to have one, it's fine. Same, real same. Yes. 
<laughs> Y'all stole that's, my thunder. That's all I did. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Edward? Say it's good to be back in person. And uh, Steve Anderson, would you stay a minute afterwards? Let me ask you something. And that's all. Thank you. Coach Cole? Yes, sir. I have several items, but one of them, I would tell him that we're in Baltimore that I think I prayed the last time we were here, so you might not know. You might not be meeting again. <laughs> uh, I've had several conversations with uh, people in my ward, uh, Mr. Mayor, and the concerns have been the same. Uh, on the east side, especially uh, McLean and Central Street, the houses there that are subpar that need to be torn down, just flat, need to be torn down. Uh, property that we cannot find owners to uh, uh, become overgrown. And that's their biggest concern. Now, I think you had a conversation with one of our members, uh, one of my people that live on my old street, <laughs> side street. Yeah. Remind me who. I have conversations with a lot of folks. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Cole. Sure. Okay. Right. You know, she was complaining about the condition of the street. And that's why I said, I'm glad we'll have a street meeting so we can discuss that. Uh, so I need to be filled in on the project out of Southtown. Okay, let me, let me address <clears throat> a couple of those things about uh, property maintenance codes. Your code enforcement report was included in your packet for April. Uh, we are bringing at least 30, 32, 35 folks, Kevin's back there, 35 folks a week into court on Wednesday for violation of property code maintenance uh, regulations that we have. Uh, we demolished eight structures in April. We tore down eight structures. We did 82 re-inspections. We issued uh, 16 citations. Please remember courts have been closed for several months. They just reopened up, um, I guess a month or so ago. Uh, and we've had a backlog of folks to come to court. Uh, but we do that every Wednesday morning, I believe, uh, to try to get caught up in uh, we're placing liens on properties and doing everything that we can. If there is a specific house or a specific area, please let us know. Let Thomas and Kevin know. I'm not aware of us not being able to find any owners. There may be some owners from out of town, uh, but we can find just about anybody. But, you know, just let us know, and we'll certainly address that. We'll do that. Uh, Southtown Project, you want to know about that? Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. Resident out there stopped me and asked me about 51, Highway 051, the renovations and uh, the cleanup area there. And, uh, is it still on? Is it still? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, if Scott wants to weigh in the street, yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, 51 and Christie Street, that's where the new uh, police training facility is going to be and the reconstructed wetlands. Um, like everything else in the building trade right now. Uh, we ordered the building as soon as the job did three months ago and the earliest delivery date is September. Uh, we can't even get a set of anchor bolts on them until then. Uh, so as soon as they get there, they'll start pouring the slab and, and they'll have everything <coughs> ready. We're waiting on the building to get here. Then we'll finish up the site work and you know, get the grass planted, some more trees. And then on Samaria Bend Road, that's where the soccer complex is going to go. Our crews have gotten out there and removed all the old slabs and stuff like that that, you know, we don't want that contractor to do that we can do in-house and save the city some money. It won't be the soccer field we did, it's supposed to be good. Okay. I had one gentleman just said, are you going to make that a one-way by the police precinct area out there because the roads are so narrow? Christie Street? No, off of Christie Street. It's uh, behind, it's behind Christie, it's behind the uh, oh, where, where Precinct, Precinct Park is? Yes. Well, Precinct Park is, you know, we, we took that street out at the uh, south end of it. It, yep. it ends into the parking lot of the existing precinct that's there now uh, where the basketball goal and playground is. That's the parking lot. It's a, the street actually just dead ends into the parking lot now. So that's, that's all you can go. Okay. Just one way. Thank you. Anything else? Coach? Okay. Megan? No report. Ricky? 
Uh, yes, Mayor, can we uh, retable and revisit our vendor ordinance and have a public hearing in the near future? Sure. I think that went through the local government committee. Be more than happy to do that. Yeah. Ready for that. You're talking about food trucks, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay, sure. Okay, anything else? No, sir. I'm sorry. Mary Claire? Uh, thank you, Coach Cole. Yes, we are going to try to get our all of our people together for the street and sanitation. Uh, that's something in the very near future. I want to thank especially uh, Mullins and Joslyn for a couple of calls that I've made about Concord Cove and Forkham uh, with code enforcement. And yes, the, the, the courts have been backed up and they just opened up, I believe, last month. So we are moving in the right direction. So as far as the houses need to come down, that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> That's all. All right, thank you. Dennis? I want to thank Public Works for doing a great job. I know they've been behind with uh, cleaning up all the debris from these last storms we've had. Uh, I know I was talking to one of the fellows with a knuckle bone the other day, and they were talking about how far behind they are because of all that, but they've done a great job of uh, straightening everything out and picking the debris up. That's all. Thank you. Bonetta? Chief Isbell and Chief Sipes were here. I just wanted to rec recognize and thank both the fire department and our police department. It's been a couple of weeks ago in the wee hours of a Saturday morning. There were two young <coughs> men killed in front of my house. They're on Lake Road in a, in a, in a single accident. And the, um, the response time was simply amazing. It was. You had people on the scene mm -hmm. before I could grab my cell phone to call 911. It was, it was, and the professionalism, the care, um, the dignity that you gave to those victims, to the, to the people that were obviously upset and came on the scene, you, everyone, at, everyone from the city and, and, and all our first responders, it was just impressive, and there was so much professionalism, and I was very proud uh, to be part of the city and to, to see uh, see our folks at work. Uh, I'm sorry that it happened, but uh, y'all did a, a tremendous, tremendous job. Amen. 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 Thank you, Vanetta. Uh, th this is also National Public Works Week, and we want to recognize the, the folks that, that work in public works for the city of Dyersburg, several departments that, that do that. We're actually going to have a luncheon this Friday. We've done that for many years. Uh, that'll be this Friday at the PDC. Uh, for those folks that uh, want to come to that, and we certainly hope they do. So, Coach Cole, do you have something else? Yes. On that note, uh, I was talking to a lady the other day, and she made this point. Point out. She said that she was proud of this board because when you look across the nation and across all other cities, there's all this infighting and bickering. But she said she was proud to be a, a citizen of Dyersburg because of the way we carry ourselves. And what she just said about the police department and the, it was it, yeah. the fire department, the EMT, it just points out that there are a lot of good people in Dyersburg. Mm -hmm. And we need to be proud of them because they're proud of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Anything else? Again, thank you for coming tonight. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to the police officers recognized. We thank you for what you do, both fire and police department, and all of our employees for the city of Dyersburg and the public works and uh, the other folks that came tonight. Thank you for being here. We're adjourned. Thanks.